Hello friends, welcome to this session and tutorial series on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Preparation. I am Praveen, a Google Cloud Authorized Trainer. I will be trainer for you for this entire course. I have certification from multiple hyperscaler and cloud provider like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. You can connect me and follow me on LinkedIn with my first name and last name. If you are new to this tutorial series, then also follow my two other playlists. One is AWS Certified Solution Architect Hands-On and another is AWS Certified Solution Architect Question and Answers. If you are new to my channel, please like it, subscribe it and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I will publish new video. Without wasting any time, let's get started. Hello friends, welcome to this session and tutorial series on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. Friends, this is 38th uh, session of this tutorial series and today we are going to look into and understand Amazon EC2 EBS volumes and EBS volumes type. Friends, you know we are in EC2 models and so far we have covered introduction to EC2, EC2 pricing, EC2 instance types and we also done two hands-on lab on EC2. In previous session, we have looked into security group and also done lab. Today, we look into the EBS. Friends, this is very important topic for solution architect in general and also for your certification. You must expect there should be questions related to this concept for your exam. Since today again we are going to look into AWS documentation to understand EBS volume. Friends, uh, you know, uh, as I said previously, the slide which I will present to you may be that will be outdated after a couple of years, okay, three years, four years, but AWS documentation will be always up to date, okay. So I feel AWS documentation is the best place to learn and go through and understand AWS services. So today we are going to refer basically two document. Okay. One document, let's open Google first. And first document we are going to refer and for that we will type EBS. Okay. And we will open the first link where you see aws.amazon.com slash EBS okay so we will open this document okay and another document we are going to follow and for that we need to type AWS EC2 EBS volume types and here again we will open this document you see Amazon EBS volume types okay so these two documents we are going to follow today okay so let's start with the first document okay and here let's understand what is EBS okay since EBS is stands for elastic block storage okay so here we see E for the elastic B for the block and S for the storage this is called EBS okay so going forward and in your exam you will see either we will be calling Amazon elastic block storage or we will be calling Amazon EBS. Friends, this Amazon EBS is designed for designed for use with Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud EC2. Okay, friends, we have seen in the previous lab, right? So when we launched EC2 instance, or we can say virtual machine, we created EBS volume, right, of 10 GB. And this is quite common because when we need virtual machine, so virtual machine is nothing but similar to our laptop, right? So our laptop needs storage for the operating system and not to store our data, right? So virtual machine also need storage, okay? And for virtual machine, for EC2 instance, EBS is storage, okay? So this is virtual disk. So this is also called EBS is also called virtual disk okay so this will be mainly used with amazon ec2 
One very important concept here we need to understand Amazon EC2 is used for high performance and this is block storage okay for high performance I will come to this point okay but this is block storage friends remember in Amazon world okay storage types is basically classified in three category one is uh, object storage then block storage then file storage okay in the previous module s3 we completely talked about object storage and we know s3 is object storage right now we are coming to block storage okay and ebs is block storage okay now let's little bit understand what is block storage okay friends you know this uh, object storage block storage and a uh, file storage is the technology okay this is the technology through which and the way uh, any hard disk is stored the data okay now let's look at uh, one other document here okay so here i have opened this document and this document you we see here uh, block storage block storage is basically is a technology as i said so this is the technology the way hard disk okay store our data so block storage what is do it breaks up our data into the small blocks it breaks up our data into a small block then store those blocks into the separate pieces okay that's why it's called block storage okay quickly understand this what happened so let's say if this is the hard disk okay and when we store our data what it will do it breaks our data okay and each data each blocks is stored in this small blocks okay and that's why it's called block storage okay now let's go oh, Okay, now let's understand a little bit more about this. Why it is called high performance? Okay, friends, again here you see this is this is fast and efficient storage. Okay, and same same sentence we have also seen our AWS on AWS documentation, right? Here it has been said this is high performance. Okay, okay. So let's understand this. Okay, so also we know this is used with ec2 right so with ec2 when we have to store our data right so we can use s3 or you can use a block storage eps or efs let's not go to the efs okay so when you have ec2 okay and we have seen in previous lab we attached ebs right we attached ebs to our ec2 right and in previous module, if you remember, we have the S3, right? And S3, we know this is object storage. And S3 is public, AWS public service, right? So when you need some data from S3, then we need to access this S3 with the public endpoint, end okay? So this all data come through the internet to our EC2 instance. Since there is also a way we can attach okay EC2 or S3, we can mount S3 to our EC2. But still, okay, S3 is a public service, and this is far far away from our EC2 instance. Okay, and here EBS volume you have seen in the previous lab, we have directly attached with our EC2 instance. As this is directly attached, so there is less latency. Okay, so in your exam, if you see option of the S3, EBS, and EFS, okay, and if it's require high performance storage, then we can go for EBS, elastic block storage. Okay, then so another important thing here. This is designed for mission critical system. That what is mean? Okay, if you need very high performing, reliable, and fast storage for your virtual machine, EC2, then we will be using EBS. Okay. One again important point 
we need to understand EBS replicates our data within ability chart. Okay. Before that, EBS is EBS scope is ability chart. So when we create EBS, then we have to select ability chart. Okay. So what AWS do to make it reliable? They replicate our data within a ability chart. So this is very important concept. Okay. So if you have to move your data from one ability zone to another ability zone, then there is way to copy data from one ability zone to another ability zone. Okay. So this is not a regional service. This is ability zone. Okay. Zone specific service. So that we need to mind. And AWS always to make it our data durable they replicate our data within ability zone so as a solution architect we also need to understand this point <coughs> since now let's go and understand what is different types of ebs volume okay so one thing uh, let's remember ebs volume is basically seven types EBS volume is basically seven types. Okay, let's look into this. Okay, so if you scroll down here, we see we have a GP3 EBS volume type, GP2 EBS volume type, IO2 block express, IO2 and IO1. So these are five types of EBS volume. Again, if you scroll down, okay, in other category, we have ST1 and SC1. So all together we have seven type of EBS volume and we are going to look into in detail. So we need to remember we have seven types of EBS volumes. Okay. Okay. Now these seven types of EBS volume are categorized into two parts. Okay. And these parts are okay. One is called solid state drive SST and another is called hard disk drive HDD. Okay. Friends, now let's understand this is very important. Okay. And as you have seen here, okay, let me show you. So out of these seven, okay, five volume types fall into solid state state drive SST and two fall into hard disk drive okay so out of seven volume type fives are in SST and two are in HDD if you scroll down here you see solid state drive this has these five types of volume if you scroll down in hard disk drive we have two types of volume okay so this is broadly categorized in the two part solid state drives and hard disk drive friends now let's understand what is solid state drive okay what is purpose of solid state drive and what is purpose of hard disk drive okay so solid state drive is okay this is optimized for transactional workload SST designed for optimized for transactional workload where HDD optimized for large streaming workload. So here you understand okay what is transactional and what is streaming. So solid state drive is optimized for transactional workload and HDD is optimized for op large streaming data. Okay when we say transactional workload it's optimized for okay IOPS. Okay, IOPS means read write operation. Okay, and we say large streaming workload. This is optimized for throughput. Now let's understand what is IOPS. Okay, and what is throughput. So friends, here is the differentiating factor. SDD is designed for this design for performance attributes based on IOPS. Okay. And SDD is designed for okay performance attributes on throughput. Okay, so let's understand what is IOPS and what is throughput. Okay, 
So let's say we have this hard disk and this hard disk is block storage okay and it has different blocks okay and we know when we store our data then our data will be divided into the blocks okay then it will be stored correct so let's say you want to access data if you have if you are able to access this block this block and this block in one second if you are able to access three block in one second so this is called i ops okay so three per second right so whether or it could be either read and write if you able to read and write okay three blocks per second then i ops is three three i ops per second okay so here we count IOPS, it counts in terms of read and write operation, read and write operation, okay. Whereas throughput, if we able to, okay, access this blocks sequentially, okay, if able to access this three block sequentially, okay, and each block size is, let's say, 1 MB, okay. Each block size is each MB and we able to access this three block in one second. So throughput will be three MB per second. So IOPS we count in terms of read and write operation, whereas throughput we count in terms of data size. So here we see 3 MB per second is throughput, okay, and 3 IOPS per second is the IOPS, okay, 3 read and write is the IOPS, okay. So when you see your application needs performance in terms of read and write operation, then we will be and we should use SST. If your application need performance in terms of bandwidth okay amount of data it can store it can read then we should go for hdt okay okay now here we understand what is difference between ssd and what is difference between hdt okay now let's scroll down and let look into one by one okay so here, okay, solid state drive, solid state drives again classified into two part, okay, general purpose SSD and provisioned IOPS SSD, okay. Friends, let's understand this general purpose SSD. Friends, this is quite similar to, okay, and this term is quite similar to similar to our EC2 instance, right? If you remember, in EC2 instance type, we has general purpose EC2 instance, correct? So we use general purpose EC2 instance if you don't know whether our application is CPU optimized or memory optimized, right? Or storage optimized. In that case, we use general purpose EC2 instance type. Same here, for EBS volume, if you don't know what performance is needed for your application, whether it needs in terms of the IOPS or the throughputs, okay. In that case, we can go and use general purpose SSD and this provides balance of price and performance, okay. Second, provision IOPS. When you know and you are aware your application need high performance, okay, low latency, high throughput workload. In that case, we should go and use provision IOPS SSD. Okay, so this is difference between general purpose SSD and provision IOPS SSD. It will be more clear when we look into one by one. Okay, so now let's go and look this into one by one. Here we see in general purpose we have two volume type GP2 
and GP3. Okay, friends, we know this 2 denotes generation, right? So, general purpose 2 and general purpose 3. So, this is latest generation, right? Same in provision IOPS, here we see IO1, right? And IO2. So, this is old generation and this is latest generation. And we know latest generation has always better performance, okay? And even it's cheaper sometimes, right? And again, on top of IO2, we have IO2 block express, okay? So, this is even more optimized on top of IO2, okay? Now, let's understand this one by one. So, if we look at durability, okay? So, durability is almost same for GP3, GP2, IO1, okay? And here IO2 and IO2 block space has better durability so that 99.99%. So this is one of the consideration we should keep in mind. But from exam perspective, we want to be get tested on the durability. Okay. Important things you would expect in the exam and that we we need to know is the use case. Okay. What are the different use cases where we will be using which volume type okay and this okay not only use case okay we also need to understand couple of more points and there is difference so these are gp3 gp2 and all these volume types have some limitation and these limitations are vary on varies on volume size okay maximum iops supported and maximum throughput okay so there are limitations and this is this three points something we need to remember or we need to keep in mind all the time while designing solution okay and also this is very important for your certification okay so if you see here gp2 and gp3 both both can have maximum up to 16 terabyte of size okay and also here io2 and io1 can have 4 gb2 16 terabyte of storage but if your application needs more than 16 terabytes okay then in that case we should be using io2 block express okay so here we see this supports 64 terabyte okay so again, this we need to know, right? So if your application needs more than 16 terabyte of storage, okay, then we have only left option with IO2 block express, correct? Now, if you look at IOPS, okay, so our GP1 and GP2, it support maximum 16,000 IOPS, okay? If your application needs more than 16,000 IOPS, okay, then we should go for either for IO1 or IO2. Here, if you scroll down, so this column is for IO1 and IO2, right? So, if your application needs more than 16,000 IOPS, then we only left with option with IO1 and IO2. And even if you need more than 64,000, then you should go for IO2 block express, right? And last characteristics is throughput, okay? So our GP2 only support 250 MB per second throughput, okay? Where our GP3 latest generation support 1000 MB per second throughput, okay? So this is also one of the characteristics we need to keep in mind. And our this IO1, IO2 also supports 1000 MB per second throughput. But when you need more than that, then you have to go for IO2 block express. Since one thing always keep in mind, okay, when you see questions related to the EBS volumes, okay, so these are the parameters we need to understand and we need to do calculate. We need to do some calculation. You will see questions, okay. A application need 
that much storage of EBS volume and these are the requirement okay and this needs that many IOPS that much throughput so we need to do these calculations and understand which storage type will be which EBS volume types will be best fit for that use case and those will be only based on these three factors okay so that we need to keep in mind okay <coughs> Apart from this, okay, if we quickly look at this use case, okay, so use case will also help you understand, okay, which which volume types we use for the which purpose, okay. So for IO, okay, for GP1 and GP2 is best for, okay, low latency interactive applications, okay, and development and test environment, okay. So this is something very clear okay and we should keep in mind okay if you see question related to application is for the test and dev environment or it needs low latency interactions okay then we can straight go and say we will use either gp1 or gp2 okay if we see question is saying workload required sustained iops sustained iops means continuous iops okay application is read and write heavy applications okay so it's continuously reading and writing a lot of data to disk okay so if it needs sustained IOPS okay or more than 16,000 IOPS that what we have seen right previously then we should go for either IO1 and IO2 and also as we know if we have IO intense database workload in that case we will be going for IO1 and IO2 volume type and if we see apart from this okay if application needs sub millisecond latency okay sustain IOPS and more than 64,000 hour IOPS and 1000 MB per second throughput okay that's what we have seen here correct so if this is the requirement okay then we should go for io2 express okay <clears throat> so this use case gives some broader idea okay what are the use case of the different volume type that will help you in the exam so please keep this in mind as well okay now we left with two remaining volume type right so let's scroll down and these are these are fall into this HDD okay and SDD also categorized in two parts okay one is throughput optimized SDD and another is cold HDD friends this is very simple and easy to remember okay like our S3 storage in S3 storage we see we have glacier right glacier we use for less frequent access workload right same okay if you need throughput optimized volume type okay then we go for hdd that we know if you need throughput optimized volume then we will go for hdd and if those data is less frequently accessed then we go for cold sdd okay if your data is frequently accessed and throughput intensive then we will go for throughput optimized as DAT okay and so basically this two category has okay throughput optimized SDD has volume type SC1 and cold SDD has SC1 so there is no more category okay so each has one volume type in the sense there is no more difference only difference is the way data is going to be accessed okay if less frequency frequently accessed we'll go for the sc1 if the frequently accessed in high intense workload we'll go for sc1 st1 okay little bit look at the use case okay if you see use case for the or throughput optimize SDD if you have a requirement for big data okay data warehouse or log processing then we should go for throughput optimized SDD or ST1 okay and if you see okay where 
where data is less frequently accessed or where you want to use SDT, okay, throughput optimized, but still you want lower storage cost. For that case, use case, you can go for SC1, okay. Now, also we look to other matrix, three other matrix, right? Uh, volume type, volume type, IOPS, and the throughput. So here, ST1 supports, oh, and both, looks like both ST1 and SC1 support up to 60 terabyte of size, okay? That's fine. IOPS, in terms of IOPS, SC1 supports only 250 IOPS per second, whereas ST1 supports 500 IOPS per second, okay? So that could be also one of the criteria apart from this use case, okay? If you see application needs more than 250 IOPS, okay? Then maybe we can go for ST1, right? And same for the throughput. SC1 only support 250 MB per second throughput, whereas ST1 supports 500 MB per second, okay? So based on these two IOPS and throughput, we can also select which HDD volume type we should use for our application. Friends, one point you must be thinking, okay? If not, then you must be thinking here, when we looked in SSD, okay, there IOPS, like throughput, this throughput, throughput was very high as compared to this SDD one, correct? Here we see only 500 and 250 MB, okay? Whereas if you scroll here, we see <coughs> this supports 1000 MB per second, right? And this supports uh, IO to block express 4000 MB per second throughput, okay? And starting of this discussion, I said HDD is throughput optimized, right? Then you must be thinking why throughput is very low here, right? Friends, one important point you haven't noticed, okay? So if you see here, okay, when we are talking about IOPS, okay, so in IOPS, here you see maximum IOPS size for SSD is 16 KB. Maximum size per read write for SSD volume type is 16 KB. Whereas, if you go and look at in HDD, okay, here we see this is 1 MB, okay, this is 1 MB per read write. So, friend, that is the biggest difference what we see between SSD and HDD, okay. So, friend, when we see our application or in questions, okay, it's need, okay, IOPS with, with more bandwidth, okay, with more data size, okay, then we should be going for HDD, okay. Friends, that's all for this session, okay. So, as I said, this is very important uh, documentation from AWS side, okay, it's explained very well, very detailed, okay, in table format, okay. So I would say if you have still any confusion, okay, please go and read this uh, two, two document, okay, this document and this document, okay, and I hope it will help you. Still, if you have any question, please do let me know in the comment, okay? So this, that's all for this session. In next session, we are going to look into and understand EC2 instance storage, okay? Again, this is very important topics, okay? And yeah, so that's all for today. 
थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर वॉचिंग बाय फॉर नाउ सी यू इन नेक्स्ट सेशन बाय बाय